One of the signature movements in parkour is the vault or vaulting. And there are many, many reasons to do this from a health perspective and a fitness perspective. It's going to increase your agility and your coordination. It's going to increase your strength, your ability to support your body weight going over an obstacle. And it's also an incredibly functional movement skill that allows you to get around your environment and your terrain very effectively. First, the most important principle is absorbing the impact at the end of the vault. Because that's really where, if you do that well, you'll get stronger and better and more coordinated. And if you do it poorly, you'll add impact to your body in a, in a negative way. So the first thing to get right is, is how to land from a vault, how to take the impact well, how to absorb the impact well, and how to disperse that impact going forward so you can keep moving on your path. Second bit we're to get into is the, the approach to the vault. So how do you how do you take off of the vault? How do you how far away from the obstacle do you need to be in order to get your legs up and over the obstacle, or to get your body in the right position to carry out the type of vault you want to uh, carry out and to achieve the function of the vault, which is to get over the obstacle and maybe to reach something else. Third principle to look at is really your body position as you're going over the obstacle. And the principle that we want to bear in mind is that we need to have balance in flight or balance in rotation if it's a, if it's a spinning ball. So we want to make sure that our, whatever position we're doing, we know where our body is in space and it feels good and it feels like we're in control of the movement um, and it's not just sort of reckless throwing ourselves over it. That's definitely not what we're doing in parkour. We're absolutely controlling every element of the movement. So you want to be able to feel that you have good balance as you're going over it. So the three principles, again, we're looking at a good landing, a good takeoff, and good body position as you're going over the obstacle. So if we look at the principle of landing, for example, that means we're coming over the obstacle. So if you imagine this is my obstacle and I've cleared it with a vault and I'm thinking about landing, if you're really starting out in vaults, what you want to be doing is think about how do I get down from this as I'm coming over it with a bit of speed, with a bit of momentum, how do I land safely? So obviously, the simplest way you can do this is literally sit on the obstacle and pop off it and get to a good landing. You're typically looking to land almost exclusively with most movements on the balls of the feet to absorb the impact and keep moving. So you could get used to it simply by dropping off, dropping off at different angles and changing the landing. Dropping off onto one foot and then stepping forwards. So you, your body's just getting used to a little bit of, of taking impact from that height. Once you're comfortable with that, you might come up onto your obstacle and train dropping off from the height. So imagining you just vaulted it, you're just clearing it and you're coming down onto one foot to keep moving, or to two feet if I'm landing sideways from a vault maybe. Just getting used to absorbing the impact, bending the legs, taking on the balls of the feet, but still maintaining balance and good posture so that I can move on to whatever obstacle I want to clear next. So when we're thinking about taking off on a vault, we've got to think about primarily how far away we need to be from the obstacle. If you take off very, very close, a lot of people think this is kind of a good place to be um, where, before you've trained because you, you think maybe if I'm close to the obstacle it's kind of safer and gets me over. But actually, if I'm this close, it's very hard to vault because there's very little space for me to get my limbs up and over the obstacle and onto it. The trajectory means I have to jump straight up, which means it's very hard to then go forwards. So typically the best trajectory in vaulting is to be further back from the obstacle, especially to get more experience and use more speed as you approach, so that you have all this space your lower limbs to get up and over as you're going over, whatever the vault may be. So try to be aware of this idea of space and being very close to the obstacle is, is rarely a very good idea. So you want to typically be a little bit further away, give yourself a little bit of space and that, that might take a bit of time to get used to uh, and just get used to the idea of how do I get onto the obstacle. So this takeoff um, principle is obviously going to vary depending on what vault you're using. So for example, if I'm using a step vault where I'm going to step up onto the obstacle as I go, I'm going to be using a hand and a foot, and I need to have enough space here to be able to step up and bring this foot onto or through as I go over the obstacle. Now if I'm very, very close with this, then it becomes very difficult to get my limb up and into this space above it because I have to go straight up. So I have to raise it straight up, which is quite hard work. There's also more chance that this limb coming up might catch on the obstacle in some way because there's far less space. So I want to back away a little bit, give myself a little bit more space between the foot and the obstacle, create space for this easily to move up and through. So the third principle is your body position as you're vaulting. So really the structure and the integrity 
of your body and of your limbs as you're clearing the obstacle. Okay? Massive variation here. We're not going to go into all the techniques, just an introduction to the idea of vaulting. Um, we are going to look at a few, but the, the important principle is to think about do I feel balanced as I'm going over? Do I feel in control in whatever position you're in? Some positions will feel more natural to begin with, some will feel less natural, that's perfectly fine. So think about it, if you're training on something, if you're getting used to vaulting on, on a box like this, which is you know, a really nice way to start because it's very stable, it's very regular, um, it's got a good grip, you know what you're dealing with. So, this kind of surface, which is good to start with, um, you can really play around on the obstacle in terms of what positions do I feel balanced in to come through and over this obstacle. Yeah, how? Where am I balanced? Where, where do I feel imbalanced? Where do I feel like there are problems potentially with the positions? Uh, and how stable can I be on this, on this obstacle? So I really want to get very comfortable with being in a, in a, in a well-balanced position as I'm flying through the air. So it's very much about balancing flight, balancing rotation. So we're going to start with a sit spin, which is I'm literally going to sit on the obstacle and I'm going to spin off it. So for this type of bolt, I'm coming up, as I come up, I'm trying to spin a little bit. I'm just sitting my butt onto it, other hand controls me, and I spin off. So it's really very, very, very controlled. I can do it very slowly, I can really take my time. Yeah, so you can really access this at any level of ability or training, and then as you get more comfortable, you will just put more speed into it, and it will have a little bit more fluidity as you go. But notice, the thing I'm most interested in is how do I land on the other side? So I'm looking to have a controlled landing, balls of the feet, so I can move very effectively and efficiently away. That's the key thing. If that's good, this stuff I can get better over time because this is not causing me any damage, it's making me stronger, it's making me better. If that's bad, my time training is limited because I'm going to start feeling some wear and tear from the impact on the joints. So I'm still looking for healthy biomechanics as I land, balls of the feet, bending the legs, and having good posture, and then being able to move away. So the sit spin, very simple, very accessible, so it's a really, really healthy thing to practice. So the second bowl is a body roll. So with the sit spin, we're literally using our butt to go over it. The body roll is kind of the opposite. I'm going to use my, the front of my body now and, and use that on the obstacle as I roll my hips over. And effectively, it doesn't require me to put lots of dynamism and power into it. I can take my time and control as I go over. Body roll literally is just lie your body down on the obstacle. So your abdomen, sternum area is going to lie on the obstacle. You're still using your hands on it to give yourself some control. And then you're just going to throw your hips up and over and land on the other side. So again, looking for that soft landing. I can really take my time with it. To begin with, it may not be or feel particularly graceful. But as you get confident to raise the hips a little bit, and roll through the hips as you go, it will become much more graceful and energy efficient. And one of the most fun ways, I think, to get over an obstacle in your path. So that brings us to the step ball, which is a really good one to do early on, again, because it's very natural, a lot of people do this automatically, but it's also really uh, energy efficient, really effective, and a really safe way to bowl because you've got lots of points of contact. So the step bowl when completed properly as one movement will look something like this. Which is really just trying to get over the obstacle and get going. Um, you don't need to start like that at all. You can move very, very slowly, very gently. Just approach the obstacle, both hands on it maybe to begin with. Get one leg up somehow onto the obstacle depending on your hip mobility here. It's going to be very good practice for that. Once you've got good support, try and bring this leg up, maybe move the middle arm, and then bring this leg through. If you're starting out, you can maybe just come through to a sitting position and come off, totally fine. As you get more comfortable in that position, you might step straight through into the ground. If you want to land on two feet to absorb the impact with both legs, totally fine. And then as you get more comfortable, you're going to take off slightly further back. That's the main difference. As you're approaching with a bit more speed, you're going to take off from slightly further back, and the movement's going to become a bit more dynamic as you pass through. 
So the step vault is an example of a direct vault, so I'm running straight to an obstacle and just clearing. You also want to change angle of approach to give more variation to your body and challenge your, your body brain a little bit. So we can look at big lateral vaults. So this is where I'm taking off and going over an obstacle to my side, right or left side, rather than straight ahead of me. A nice, relatively gentle way to start is by literally just trying to throw your inside, inside leg up over either onto the obstacle. If it's a nice big space like this, you can maybe just end up sitting on it like this and sliding off. And as you get comfortable, or if it's a railing, it's thinner, so it's much easier to get your leg over it. You just throw that leg over and land on the other side. So that's a lateral vault to my right side, lateral vault to my left side here. Yeah, so I'm moving sideways um, and I'm controlling the movement over it. So this is a very simple type of vault, sometimes called a dancer vault. Um, and again, just looking to get my hips up, almost swinging my foot like a penalty kick in football, and that's, that swing is going to carry me over. So that's one of the great things about vaulting, is that it's a very much a holistic movement skill. It's not just a question of where to put my hands over my feet. It's very much about organising the body using a combination of three forces, a stretch reflex, that sort of elastic muscle cycle, and momentum, plus my power and force, my strength, in order to be able to get me over it effectively. So with, the, with this type of vault, I'm using a lot of momentum. So I'm really just swinging this leg. Once this leg is in the air, it's going to carry me through the, the weight of the leg. It's going to carry my hips and then my body over the obstacle, which means I need to put very little push into the vault. So the last vault we're going to look at is going to be what we call a lazy vault in parkour. And it's, it's a lateral vault, but it's one that requires a little bit more coordination. Uh, so you can challenge yourself with this one a little bit, because we're going to try and switch our support hand from the hand nearest the obstacle to the hand coming in behind us. The end result will look like this. So I'm placing the hand, still getting that penalty swing kick. But now as I go up, I'm going to bring this hand in behind me. So to break it down, if you're not sure about it, you can again aim to sit on the obstacle like this. This is the basic posture. Bring my hand in here and I push off. So this is kind of in a way, putting your brain through the pattern of the movement without actually going over. Then, if you want to try and get used to going over, just try and get your butt a little bit closer to that side. And you're going to slide off. And then when you're comfortable, keep your body up a little bit, a little bit more tension in the core. Bring this hand in quicker, and you're going to clear it. So this is a lazy ball, very efficient way to cut clear an obstacle. And you can pick your landing two foot, like just then, or one foot, to move off in whatever way I want. So let's bring it back to those key principles and summarize them again. Am I landing well? Most importantly, am I taking the impact really well? Am I landing under control and with balance? Am I taking off effectively and optimizing the trajectory of my takeoff, depending on the vault that I want to do? Am I far enough away from the obstacle? Uh, and is my body position as I go over the obstacle, is that balanced? And am I in control? Do I feel comfortable with that movement so that it isn't sort of wild and reckless and I feel like I'm going to fall off the obstacle or over the obstacle? So do I feel comfortable, balanced in flight as I pass through it? Those three principles, taking off, balancing flight and landing. If you're getting those three right and you're concentrating on making those good and high quality, the actual vault technique you use doesn't really matter as long as you're achieving your, your outcome. So focus on the principles, always bring it back to the principles, the qualities of movement, the attributes of movement, that's what's going to make you a stronger and better athlete, rather than trying to sort of really focus on, on, on technique for, from an arbitrary point of view. Doesn't mean the technical training isn't going to be good and useful, especially as you get better, you will really work on the tech. Um, but to begin with, those basic attributes of quality of movement are far, far more important for us as, as coaches and as athletes. So build this type of training into what you do. Go outside and explore your environment, see what vaults work in, in your park, in, in your street, or in your furniture at home, whatever. Um, apply it wherever you can, the more variety the better, and you'll see that it'll make you a better move.